Welcome to our Questel webinar. Today we will see an introduction to IntelliXir. I am Aurélie, I'm European Account Manager for IntelliXir and a chemist by training. So today we'll see an introduction to IntelliXir. IntelliXir is a software to analyze patents as well as non-patent literature, such as journal articles, clinical trials, design, GNPD, etc. And the aim is usually to do innovation watch and competitive intelligence. So it's important to know that IntelliXir was developed in France at the National Center of Atomic Energy by information professional for information professional. The aim was to use statistical analysis to extract relevant documents faster from the growing amount of patents and scientific literature. So our users are mainly information professionals, but as well as IP consultants, IP searchers, and more rarely patent attorneys. Our users will typically have a need, such as carrying out a competitor analysis, searching for innovation, uh, doing a technological landscape, identifying experts or other needs that you see on the slides. And to do so, they will have to go in the literature uh, find patents, non-patent literature, analyze it, and during the analysis they may need to involve scientific experts to steer the study in the right direction, as well as report to their manager or end users, and therefore Intelixir will help mixing different uh, structured data, analyzing it, as well as having multiple interfaces to help you collaborate effectively with scientists and management. So how does IntelliXir work? So IntelliXir work uh, by first importing data. So the first step you would have to do would be to gather information that you wish to analyze. So maybe you have um, Orbit and therefore you will export patterns from Orbit or other data provider. You might need to analyze journal articles or clinical trials. And so the first step is really to define what is your need, going on a different data provider and export the data to save it on your computer. Once you have saved all the files that you want to analyze, you can go and log into IntelliXir. So IntelliXir is a software that is based on physical server in France, so they are not, uh, we are not on the cloud. You know where your data is stored, it's on physical servers. But the advantage is that you don't need to install it on your computer. You can access it using username and password, and that helps collaborating with the scientists or with your end users or management by giving them um, logging in a password. They can connect to your study and they can see what you want them to see. Of course, we are HTT secure, uh, as secure as we can do on internet. Once you've logged onto, onto IntelliXir, you can now import your data. So the import is fairly straightforward. You will have an import button and you will be able to access to this page. On this page, you can click browse and find the data that you've saved on your computer. And you can just select, if you want to select the patents, you click patents and you say it's coming from your patent provider, so if you export it from STN, you can choose STN the old or a new XML one. If you wanted to add some articles, again, browse, say if it's coming from Medline, for instance, and you click import. So it's fairly straightforward, find the file, say where it's coming from, and click import. The import might take a few minutes, because during the import, the software will carry out a lot of processing. It will, for instance, um, manage a signing name, group signing name, so we're like cleaning it up, it might um, analyze the inventors, the authors, group them, cleaning them, extract the main concept, rerun categorization that you would have created in the past, and do a lot more processing. Once you have imported the data, all our statistics will be organized under the black menu that you see. If I zoom on the first part of the black menu, 
we can see here we have two tabs, patents and articles. And these are the only two tabs where the statistics separate patent and articles. All the other statistics will mix patent and articles, but these two ones will be separated because it will be statistics that is not relevant to both, such as patent classification can only be applied to patents. These two menus um, will adapt, meaning if you do not have any articles, you will not see the tab articles, so the menu is dynamic. And what's interesting is that these two menus do not require any processing because they are what we call macroscopic statistics. They're very general. They can be used to have an overview of your documents or uh, help you refine your study. And so I've selected here, you can see I've under, underlined temporal distribution, geographic coverage, and patent classification, which we will see three examples here. So in the top left, we can see the geographic coverage. So here we can see um, the patents that are published, where they're filed, which country are they protecting, or have been protecting. And so if you've imported documents of a specific assignee, you can see the portfolio of your assignee, or if you're studying a specific domain, as well you can see where are the countries that are the most protected. On the top right, we can see a bar graph of an IPC classification. So in Intellectia, we can analyze IPC, CPC, US code, and uh, FI term. So here in the bar graph, you can see that a uh, lot of uh, little options make life easier. For instance, when you hover over uh, bar, you can see the definition of the classification code. On the top right, you can see you can export the data as an Excel file, as an image, or tweak the graph. Bottom part of the graph, you can see the temporal distribution. So on this graph, the patents and the article are displayed. We can see the patents in blue and the article in green. And we can see that I have important more patents than articles in the study. Next part of your menu, you will have a tab called Categorization. And in the categorization, you will have multiple ways to categorize your study. One of the most used is our custom field. A custom field is a categorization that you create according to your own rule and what makes sense to you. So here, for instance, we can see I've created a graph where I have, for instance, a category called clothing, and I have 525 documents. So this categorization that you can create yourself based on your own needs will be very useful. Useful to analyze the data. Maybe we can then cross this categorization with other data that could be interesting to you. For instance, if I look here, I have uh, crossed my categorization, so we find clothing at the bottom, and I've crossed it with assignee names. So I can see which assignee is working on which categorization. Something I failed to mention is that all the graphs in Intellixia are dynamic, which means on any graph you're interested in a specific part of it, you can always access a document. So here you can see a bubble that says that Henkel has published three documents in clothing. clothing. If you're interested, you click on it, and then you can see the documents. And that works for all graphs. You look at the geographic map, you're wondering which patents are protecting a specific country, you click on the country and you can see the documents. All graph, bar, bubble, map, network, you can always access the documents because the main aim of the graph is to help you find relevant documents. So here we can see who is working on the categorization that interests us. We can of course, have an assignment in cleanup in, in IntelliX here. It is a crucial part for any information professional, and we have very advanced options to help you manage the assignment name grouping and assignment name cleanup. We'll have tools that help you carry out the cleanup once for all future study and work in collaboration with your colleagues to work on the assignment name cleanup. So this is the menu text detection. Here, the categorization will be made automatically. 
And Selixir is designed to help you work in different tabs. So it is very interesting to open the tab a categorization, you categorize your study. But maybe some documents have not been categorized, you do not know what they are. Or maybe you're discovering a new study, you're analyzing documents that are not in your field of expertise, and you want to have an overview and have the software help you dig through the data. So here we're looking at an automatic categorization, which can help you enrich your categorization in different tabs. And so here what we are looking at is what we call a tree in Elixir. You have the different bubbles represent the documents, and the branches will group the documents according to their vocabulary. The vocabulary is based on concepts, and concepts will be extracted from title, abstract, and claim. You will then see here that documents have important in here where you're about disinfectant. We can see here a branch that talks about particle oxide coat. So maybe the chemistry of disinfectant. If I look at the green um, area, we talk about skin care. So maybe disinfectant are used in cosmetics. If I look on the far left of the brown yellowish area, I see fiber, fabric. This is how I had created my categorization about clothing. And we will see in gray here, cavity, oral cavity, so more into the oral care. And so with this, I'll be able, of course, to access the document or to investigate what's in my uh, database. I will be able to click on a branch, regenerate a tree, and really dig into the data to help me figure out what's in it and create categorization to save what I see. During your categorization, you might need to involve colleagues, scientific experts or other experts, to help you review the document and help you steer the, the study in the correct direction. For experts, we will have dedicated interface, which will be extremely simple, because if you want to involve someone um, for a specific point or for a specific document, you do not want them to have to learn about how to use Intellix here. So the interface design for experts is very simple. They get one document, or I mean, they can get the document that you send to them. They see the list, click on the list, and they have easy option to rate, comment, and they won't have to have to find their way through Intellix here. And when you connect to Intellix here, you can then see what your, com what your expert has said, how they wrote the document, sort your document by their rating, read their comments, answer them, etc. Once your study is finished, um, you will have a need to create a report. I don't know if you've noticed during this presentation, all my graphs had the questal colors, because you can choose a color profile in Intellix here, which match your company's colors. And on each graph, you'll then be able to tweak the graph to highlight anything that is of importance to you. You will have easy way to zoom, to stretch different uh, graph types. We saw today some bar graph, bubble graph, maps, um, tree. We'll have a lot of different graphs to really represent the data in a way that is the quickest to understand. So we can see on this page three graphs looking different depending on if you wanted to squeeze it at the bottom of the page or if you wanted to put in one half and have a text on the other half and um, choose your color style. If you are used to creating Word or PowerPoint reports, Intellixir can help you. The um, navigation to Intellixir will allow you to regularly add images to your report and at the end to export your images or graphs in Word or PowerPoint. And this really saves you time in the way that when you create PowerPoints, you often have the need to copy paste an image in the PowerPoint and the image is too big, you need to resize it to the correct size of the slides. And these are small details that make a big difference to be able to quickly do things without having to do repetitive tasks that do not require any brain, but that can be um, asked to the software. So Word or PowerPoint will export your graph that you selected one image per slide, and all you need to do then is uh, change the template as you will have added comments 
every time you save an image to your report. However, if you wanted to present your data in a more lively manner, we also have uh, an interactive dashboard. Dashboard is really useful to share results. As you can see here, we have four graphs. The first one is temporal distribution. The top right is I've chosen to display the top assignee. Uh, bottom left, I've chosen to display the main concept. And bottom right, I've chosen to display the geographic map. So you can see here that you can choose which graph to put in the uh, four graphs. And then here, my data is mixed. So we're looking at all the data I've imported, patents and articles. But if I wanted to, I would be able to quickly switch to look only at patent or only article or only a specific sort of document that I choose. What's interesting about the dashboard is that it's also very interactive in a way that you can see here I've selected the last five years. You can select the last five years and then regenerate the next three graphs. On the second one, I'm interested in Olympus. I click on Olympus, and then I generate the third graph, which is the cloud. So the cloud we're looking at is the most occurring words in a document of Olympus over the last five years that were imported in my database. Finally, I can see on the bottom right the countries that are protected by Olympus. This can be really interesting in a live presentation or sitting with management or end user to see if the study is going in the right direction. You can exchange if the person is interested in a different assignee. You can click and quickly regenerate the graph on a different assignee or on a different time period. It's also a dashboard that you can send online. So you would copy the link and send it to um, an end user and they could access it and exchange tell you what they were interested in and of course at any point in this graph you can always access the document so i hope you get a good idea of what is intellixir so intellixir allows you just to recap intellixir allows you to import patents as well as non-patent literature it will carry out a harmonization harmonize your data and carry out a lot of processing to then help you manage assigning and cleanup efficiently, create your own categorization to analyze the document and angle and extend to you. You will then have um, interactive interfaces to help you share your results or easy interfaces to involve your expert, scientific expert or patent attorneys into your study. And you will have options to create reports tweak the graph, change the colors to help you create dashing reports or present live your data. So I hope the presentation was clear, that you understand you understood everything. And we welcome you to ask any question at the end of the webinar. If you want to know more about Intellixir, we also welcome you to contact us at info at Thank you for your attention.